Alright, hello, my name is Mackenzie Thomas, and I go to Eastern University, and I'm going to tell you about my, my life, about my life story. Well, when I was growing up, I started growing up, I was born in Paoli, Pennsylvania, and we moved down to Philly, and then we moved to Redding, and then I came back down to Philly, and once I came back down to Philly, my dad left, so it was kind of a little bit hard, and it was like, I used to get in trouble, and I used to blame it on that situation, but it was like, my cousin came to me, and my cousin was adopted, and he told me, I can't blame it on my dad. It's his fault that he wanted to leave, and I gotta be a better man. He said that he set the standard of what I shouldn't do in my life, and I should go the opposite way. So I took those words, and I sort of ran with it. So I started doing my work, and I became, I tried to become like a great student. I tried to start getting A's, and then I sort of fell off the wagon again when I started hanging with people that I shouldn't have been hanging with around my neighborhood. They're, they like what you would call like the drug dealers or the so-called gangsters around my way. And they started like bringing me along with what they would do. Like we would sit around and chill out, and just play and do stuff like that. And then my brother came to me, and like my brother set another example for me. He was doing what he had to do. He played sports. He was getting straight A's. And like I just looked at him and I said, "That's what I want to do. I want to be like my brother." But like I don't want to be. I want. I don't want to be his man. But I want to be a man that like he could look at and say, I respect you. That's the only thing I ever really wanted was like my brother look at me and say, I respect you as another man. Yeah. So from there I said I needed to do something with my life. But I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. And it hit me when my cousin died, he got shot in the back of his head. He it was gang related, he got shot in the back of his head. And when I'm sitting there looking at my uh, my cousin in the casket, I said I gotta do something with my life. And the thing I figured, I figured I might as well go to the military. So I started doing some research and I figured out that I wanted to go to the Marines. And I said, you know, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it right. So I asked my mom and she started doing some research and she found a program called the Young Marines and she started getting into that. And once she got me into that, I realized that I'm going to do this and I'm, that I'm not going to do anything else. And I sort of just put my mind into that and like when opportunities hit me, like to go slide back or backtrack and go hang out with the people that I shouldn't be hanging with, I stand strong and I know like they're not doing what I want to do. And I hold that, but like opportunities also hit me when I'm talking to people and they might tell me, you can't do this because like, we can't do this because of our color. And like, it's hard out there for our color and I understand that, but I always struck it off. And sometimes they call me like, they say you're a little bit too, um, you're, too you're a little ignorant to the world. And I tell them I'm not ignorant. It's just I don't see what I want to see, but I also understand what I don't want to see. So the ignorance of other people don't affect me. And an example is that is one time I was in a car with my mom, and a Caucasian man rode past us and called us niggers. And my friend in the back seat got so riled up and he was angry, like we should run up to that man and we should hit him. And I'm like, we just need to calm down. It shouldn't affect us. We're, when he stooped down to that level to call us niggers, it proved that we were on a different level than him. That the ignorant person in that situation was him. And that's pretty much just my situation.